so my name is Steve Ridgell, and if you watch very many of my videos, you know that I'm not a very original thinker. I mean, most of what I get, I read the Bible, or I see someone and tell their story, or I look at something and, and get a lesson from that. I just don't come up with much original stuff. And that's okay. So today I want to tell you what I learned from my friend Al. Now, Al is legally blind. I tell Al all the time, Al, you're handicapped. You just don't really know it. Now, he is aware that he's handicapped. And in fact, he stands up for the rights of handicapped victims. And I'll tell you why. Because it's not so much for him, but he doesn't want other people taken advantage of. But when you just see Al, <laughs> you sometimes don't realize he's handicapped. I mean, he has the cane, but he has a little peripheral vision and he has some technology that lets him sometimes be able to see some things. And he functions really, really well for someone who is legally blind. But he had a frustrating thing happen to him the other day. He went into a, a situation where he they wanted him to sign some paperwork and he wanted to, but of course he couldn't read it well. And so he, he had to say, could you read this for me? And they did. And then he said, now show me where to sign. And, and they said the oddest thing, well, you can see that. And Al was thinking, I'm blind, I can't see it, or I wouldn't have asked. But he said, just please show me where to sign. They did, and he signed it. And then they said, see, I knew you could do it, which was a little condescending, as if he not only was handicapped visually, but mentally impaired, which he is not. And he was telling me the story, and I got to thinking, you know what? That's exactly how we do people sometimes. We don't see their spiritual wounds, their spiritual handicaps. We so see someone who seems to be functioning well, and we don't know what kind of struggle they're in with their sin, their addiction, accepting forgiveness, dealing with someone who's difficult, trying to survive a, a, a crisis in their health, or whatever it is that's chipping away at their spiritual foundation. And when I was telling Al, that's a great thing to preach, he said this, yeah, kind of like at church when everybody goes by and when they say, how are you? Everybody says, fine, fine, fine. And if we're not careful, when somebody does say anything that indicates a little issue, we're like, well, you're fine. I can see that you're fine. So here's what I took away from that. One is we've got to realize that what you see really isn't always the way things are. We've got to be better at sharing our vulnerability, sharing where we need help. We've got to be better about going to people and saying, I'm struggling, can you help me with? I'm having a problem with, I need help with. We've got to be better at that. And we've got to be the kind of people that invite people for needs. We've got to be the kind of people where people feel like they can come to us and say, I need help. We've got to have the welcome mat out, whatever that takes, however that is. How different an experience for Al had when he walked in before he could say anything. And he, he said, okay, if she had said, can I help you with any of this? Or he'd have read it and he'd have said, where do I sign? And she said, right here where my finger is. There would have been so many ways to have made that a better experience. But because Al functions really well and because Al achieves a lot for a man that's legally blind, I guess she just didn't see it. Ironic, isn't it? So I'm encouraging us to be people that realize what you see in noise, what's there. So learn to ask for help when you need it. But for the rest of us, boy, let's be the ones that invite people to ask us. And then let's really show up when they do need help. So this is Steve Ridgell saying, thanks, Al, for helping me remember to look beyond what it seems like on the surface.